Tissues. Cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs. Human tissue types, the first type we're going to talk about is the one which covers us, which we see. When you look at someone, you're mainly looking at dead cells on their surface. Epithelial, epi means upon, so the epithelial tissue covers you. Below here you see there's a simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar. Stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, pseudostratified columnar, and transitional. Those are the main types of tissues we're going to talk about of epithelial. If you look, simple means one layer. Stratified, multi-layered, and pseudostratified. Pseudo means false. It looks like it's layered, but it's not. It looks like it's layered, but it's not. And usually the pseudostratified is what has the cilia for wiping down the mucus and produce, has goblet cells producing mucus. So, Then transitional will look like the picture on the right. When the bladder is empty, when the bladder is full, it stretches so it gets to look like a stratified squamous of sorts. Epithelial tissue functions. They protect. Your first line of defense is your epithelial tissue. The dead cells on top are like armor. They're bound together. When bacteria start to invade them, they slough off. Most of the dust in your house is just old you, old cells from your epithelial tissue. So those bacteria take a magic carpet ride off of you, and the next, next layer underneath starts coming upwards. They protect the underlying tissue from abrasion, so if you scratch yourself because you itch, you're not drawing blood. You're scratching some upper, low, upper layer tissues off, but not the, live, not, the, yeah, not the live cells. They do permit passage of material. They're thin enough that UV can come through and the superficial blood vessels bring blood to the surface where ultraviolet rays can help you create vitamin D. And they're thin enough, the simple squamous are thin enough that oxygen can pass through in your lungs. They secrete substances. Your sweat glands are made up of epithelial tissue. They absorb substances, such as the alveoli in the lung, the microvilli in the intestines. So nutrients are absorbed through them. Classification, they're classified basically on the shape of the cells and the number of layers. So simple again means one layer. Below you have a top view of a simple squamous and you have a cross section on the right side of simple cuboidal. That blue part, I call it in blue, is the lumen or the open spot of a duct. That might be a sweat gluct or a tear duct or something. Okay, stratified means many layers. So this picture, the diagram on the right, the, the handwritten diagram on the right, up at top, stratified squamous, is to look like the actual slide on the left here. Now your stratified squamous is up here above. It's one, two, three, four, five. Those are the layers of the stratified squamous. All this white stuff below is connective tissue. And this is just the surface of this tissue diagram, this slide, this little square here. So stratified means many layers. Strata means layered. And that's for protection. You've got stratified squamous all on the outside of you, including from your mouth to your anus, because as you eat food, it scratches down and takes off some of the surface layers. Squamous means flat, squashed. Squamous, squashed. Little flat cells. It's good for diffusion for oxygen and water. It also allows you to build up like the armor plating on the outside and they slough off nicely. Stratified squamous is your external skin. You've got your stratified keratinized squamous is your external skin. Your internal skin is non-keratinized. Basically what that means is from these stratum basali, this base layer, those are living cells being touched by blood vessels. As they move upwards, the cells start dying, but on the outside of us, on the outside of the alimentary canal, a process called keratination takes place where keratin protein starts filling these cells up. So by the time you get these up a few layers, they're just dead keratinized cells linked together. And here they're starting to slough off at the top where that, the bacteria will be taken away in a magic carpet ride. Cuboidal means cube shaped. This is a differential stain. So this is the cuboidal stain 
cuboidal cell stained red and the connective tissue stained blue. So that you can really see these nice little ducts. So they're made of simple one layer cuboidal cube cells. Here's a kidney collecting duct. Columnar means they look like tall columns. Pretty straightforward. They're good for secretion or absorption. Your respiratory tract, mucus, your goblet cells, your mucus neck cells, they're all long and columnar. So again, review. Simple squamous for diffusion or filtration. Simple cuboidal for absorption and secretion. Simple cuboidal, you find they have more organelles. There's more diffusion and filtration in those, but bigger. Simple columnar, you find in the digestive tract. Matter of fact, this is a super close-up of a microvilli. This is a microvilli. So microvilli are made up of simple cuboidal cells lining on top of some connective tissue here with blood vessels throughout and lymph tissue. Pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. If you say pseudostratified ciliated, you remember it's ciliated. The little hairs on top here are cilia. They constantly flush the mucus down. There are mucus neck cells within these columnar cells. They're called pseudostratified because you got nuclei at this layer, you got nuclei at this layer, and you got nuclei at the base layer. So it looks the nuclei look like they're stratified, but really the cells are columnar and they're not stratified. Stratified squamous, again I talked about the keratinized earlier. The non-keratinized is from the mouth to the anus. So outside is keratinized. Your lips, very thin skin. The blood vessels show through. That's what gives them their characteristic pink color. Inside the mouth, it's non-keratinized. You don't really need a lot of keratin protein on the outside linking them. They'll slough off. You basically eat yourself as some of those slough off and you digest little parts of your own skin. So here's the stratified squamous I took from the CLA packet, I believe. The surface up here is where it sloughs off to become dust. These are squamous cells. This is your basement membrane where the squamous, the base layer of the squamous cells are, the stratified squamous. These will undergo mitosis and they'll divide upwards. As they go upwards, they constantly push the next layer up, up, up. Blood vessels only come down to here, so they feed these cells up here. But the nutrients in the blood can only reach through a little ways before the cells start dying up in this stratum lucidum, this lucid area, and that's when they start filling up with keratin and get pushed towards the top. If you use your hand a lot, say, take a lot of batting practice or golfing, you build up a callus, you're just building up thicker stratified squamous epithelia up here. These go into hyperproduction and push a lot of thick keratinized cells up there to give you more protection. Transitional epithelium is lines is found in the urinary bladder, bladder. It lines the urinary bladder. So, when you are empty in the bladder, it looks like this. In the diagram here, it's not stretched out. It just looks like columnar kind of or cuboidal. It looks like a stratified columnar cuboidal mess. But it transitions and it stretches out as you fill your bladder up. So here's a nice diagram of an empty bladder. Look, it's transitional, or the, yeah, the transitional looks like cuboidal, columnar, kind of a mess. This down here is collect connective tissue, so we're not talking about that. When the bladder's full, it stretches out, the connective tissue stretches, and now it looks like stratified cuboidal squamous kind of a mess. So transitional, on the test, I'd probably give you this one because it's easiest to see, but this one's still fair game. Okay, here's a super simple diagram of tissues for review. So the top corner, you could practice on this on the PowerPoint. So it looks like one layer, they're flat, they're simple squamous. Okay, those are supposed to transition off there. They will, I guess, on your diagram. 
So, the free surface characteristics of epithelial tissue. We're still talking about epithelial tissue. They are smooth. Epithelial tissue lines all the openings. It lines your blood vessels. It lines your glands. It lines your intestine. It covers everything on the surface. They are smooth. The lining of your heart is smooth, so the blood vessels slide right through without getting sticky. They create the microvilli. Again, you saw that super close-up of the columnar cells. Those columnar cells came up around to make the microvilli. And within that, you've got your little capillaries for absorption into the blood. Cilia are on the surface of the pseudostratified epithelial tissue. Now, glands, your glands are made of epithelial tissue. You have exocrine glands because exo means exit, out. So sweat and oil are exocrine glands. They go outside the body, outside the bloodstream. They go to the surface. Your digestive enzymes are exocrine glands because they put them out into the digestive tract, which is actually exterior of the body. So sweat, sebaceous oil glands, digestive enzymes, all outside the body. Endocrine, endo means into, goes into the body. So hormones, anything which dumps into the blood, adrenaline from the adrenal glands, straight to the blood. So your exocrine glands have pores that go to the surface of the skin. Endocrine, pores which go to the blood vessels. Connective type tissue, the second type of tissue we're going to talk about. It basically connects. There's many different types of connective tissue and they're based upon their extracellular material. They, outside the cell, they lay down a different type of material called extracellular material or the matrix. They are basically characterized by this matrix. So the matrix is made up of three different things basically. Protein fibers, and you have your collagen fibers, long, strong, flexible rope fi fibers for making up your tendons, reticular fibers, which are shorter, and elastic fibers, which are kind of like springs. If you haven't guessed, your ear and nose have a lot of elastic fibers in them. The ground substance is the shapeless background outside of the connective tissue cells. Ground substance is basically amorphous, means it has no shape, no definite shape. It's jelly-like, and it fills in between the cells. So three major components of the extracellular matrix. There's fluid. The third thing is the fluid between the cells, your interstitial fluid. Now, in terms of connective cells, you have some which build and some which break down. So in the bone, you have an osteoblast. That cell is constantly taking the calcium and putting it onto the bone to build the bone. Blast build. Bob the Builder is a blaster. BBB. Bob the Builder blasts. He builds cells. Okay. Clast is to chew. CC. Clast chew like Pac-Man. Osteoclasts will break down your bone to redesign it. And last but not least, osteocytes maintain the cellular matrix, maintain the whatever's around it. In bones, the osteocyte. So an osteoblast will build itself in, and once it's built in, trapped inside the bone, as the picture below, it becomes an osteocyte, and it helps maintain the bone around it, so it doesn't get weak. Macrophage is a white blood cell which literally means large eater. Macro, large, phage, phage from the Greek phageo, to eat. They've done this electron micrograph and color enhanced it to make the white blood cell look purple and the bacteria or whatever it is look yellow. Mast cells are another type of blood cell and they release chemicals for inflammation. Your histamines. Functions of the connective tissue, they enclose and separate organs. They connect tissues. Ligaments go bone to bone. Tendons go muscle to bone. They support movement for bones and joints. They store. Adipose stores energy. It's your fat. Your bones store minerals. They insulate. They transport for blood. And they protect immune cells and bone. These are all connective tissue. This brings us to the end of part one, tissues.